Yes, I bricked my microcontroller. And let me show you how I bricked my microcontroller so it doesn't happen to you. But this video, I want to share with you ways to get out of any frustration that you might experience when doing these projects. You're going to make programs, you're going to program microcontrollers, and you're going to have problems inevitably. So as long as you're not making mistakes like um, putting the wrong connectors to the microcontroller to permanently fry the microcontroller, you're most likely going to be able to resolve the situation. I want this video to show how you can resolve these situations. If you are following along with these projects and building these projects, consider making a video on your YouTube channel and putting a hashtag newbiehack arm on the video. What I'd like to do is take a look at those projects and highlight them on my YouTube channel. If you'd like me to check out your project personally, or you are having some problems with your project, you can send me your project and I'll do an unboxing on the channel and delve into the project myself. Limit these projects to ones that you don't mind getting fried. You can personally contact me through the uh, email customer service at buildyourcnc.com. I can give you the uh, mailing address so you can send it to me. I believe these types of projects, uh, going over the projects uh, on your YouTube channels, and also getting ones from you that I can take a look at personally, will help the community in learning about this subject. In making the video that I was intending to upload, changing the, the microcontroller's clock speed from 8 megahertz to 48 megahertz, every time I write the code in either the auto-generated code to do it or doing it through manual register manipulation, I brick the chip every single time. And it is only when I use the PLL clock. Let me show you in the project. I'm going into the IOC file, which shows the chip view here, and you can have you can go into the clock configuration and you can do changes to the clock. So right now it's set for the HSI, which is fine, and the clock speed is eight megahertz. But when I change to the PLL clock to multiply it by 12 and get to the 48 megahertz, it bricks it every time. No matter what multiplication I use, you can use four as the minimum when you're using the PLL multiplier and it goes to a 16 megahertz. I'll go ahead and do this one. Well, no, I don't want to do this one because I have some code in there right now. But this is the way you do it for auto generation to auto generate the code. I'm not wanting to generate any code right now. And this is the register level stuff to do the same thing. What I'm doing is I'm making sure that it's in the HSI mode. I'm turning off the PLL so I can unlock the PLL to make changes to the multiplier and then I'm turning the PLL back on and locking the PLL so no changes can be made, and then I'm changing it to the PLL clock. So I'll show you what happens when I do try to transfer this to the microcontroller. So let me plug it in first. I'm not sure if it's still bricked in this particular instance because I might have actually done this earlier. Okay, so the red light on the ST micro on the ST link means that it's ready to be programmed. If you see a blinking red and blue light or a blinking red light, depending on the ST link that you have, it means that you cannot do any transfer to the microcontroller and some other process is using it, like maybe the ST link utility or the STM monitor or the, the STM studio or something else. So let's, let's go ahead and try to transfer the program and it's going to fail, so I already know what's going to happen, but I wanna show you what exactly is going to happen. So it says it's requiring code generation because I made changes in the IOC, but on, so I'm gonna go ahead and press okay. It says click okay to debug without invoking device configuration tool code generation. So I'm gonna go ahead and press okay. And I do not want to generate code because I have some code here already. Okay, so it's gonna try to transfer my program and it is doing it successfully. So it downloaded and verified successfully, but the target is not responding now because I've bricked it. I've put the mark controller in a state that is broken. Uh, I cannot. I now cannot connect to the mark controller. Uh, if I try to download again, you can see that it's in a state that I can download. So it's red, 
which is a state that it's connected. Uh, at least the ST link is working. So if I try to do it again, it's going to give me an error. And you can see it says target device, target no device found. And you'll see it says fail to start GDB server. Error in initializing ST link device, but it's still red. So it says it's still in a ready state. So you need to fix the market controller first before you continue using it. And the way to do that is you have to do a full chip erase. So let me show you how to do that. And this full chip erase will solve 99% of the problems you'll have. You're gonna use the STM32 ST-Link utility to do this. So I'm gonna double click that. And there's a little dynamite icon. It says full chip erase. So that's what you wanna use. And I'm gonna be using a resistor connected to pin number seven. Pin number seven is the reset pin for the STM32 microcontroller, at least this particular one. So you, you might wanna look at the data sheet or the reference manual to see which pin for yours is a reset. So I'm gonna insert it into pin number seven here. And then the other leg, the other side of the resistor is going to go to ground. So the reason why I'm putting a resistor from seven to ground is because I don't like to bring any pin to the full of 3.3 um, or the ground uh, directly. I like to put it through a resistor. And this isn't from my own experience of um, having prior failures. This is from just responses from comments in, in YouTube. So I just try not to do anything that's going to harm a, a microcontroller. So I wanna try to you know, keep it as safe as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the full chip erase, but you have to be kind of quick with this. So have your finger ready. And when I press the, when I press the full chip erase, it's going to just pause for a moment and wait for you to take that out. So I took it out and you can see that it's going through a full chip erase. And now you can see the contents of the memory of the microcontroller. You'll also notice that the red LED is blinking, and that means that it's in a connected state. The ST-Link is connected to the device. You want to, before you do any further programming the market controller, you want to disconnect from target. So it's disconnected. I can minimize that now, and I can go back. And if I want to, I can do another programming of my market controller. So you'll see that I'm gonna go ahead and press OK here. You'll see that it's actually working now, but it's still gonna have the same problem. I'm going to brick it again because I'm trying to put the same program in that doesn't work. So let me go ahead and do the same thing again and unbrick my market controller. Okay, so now it's in the reset state. I'm gonna click on the little dynamite and it will do a full chip erase again. Knowing this will give you frustration-free experience with doing these projects. Okay, so there's another thing that you need to be aware of, and that is when you have a new ST-Link V2 and you're using the version 18 of the ST32 Cube IDE, you have to do an upgrade to the ST-Link. And I'm going to change this ST-Link because I've already done an upgrade on this one. And I want to show you the process to do that because it's not perfectly straightforward. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug this. I'm going to get a brand new ST-Link. And you also have to be aware that always look at the diagram that's on the ST-Link because these may change. These are actually different from a previous batch that I got. So just be aware of which pin you need to be connecting to on the market controller. I'm gonna go ahead and open up a brand new one here. This one has the same um, pin designations for the, on the diagram, so I'm gonna go ahead and just do a direct connection. Actually, I'm gonna do this individually because I want to make sure. So this one is going to be 3.3 volts. This is the pin number 64. So I'm going to put that into the 3.3 volts, which is over here. Okay. And the purple one should be, uh, that's ground. So I'm going to put that in the ground pin. 
There we go. Now the green one over here, that's the clock. That's the SWCLK. So the clock is right here. And the SWDIO, the data input output, is in this position here. That's the first one. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this one in, and you'll see what happens when I try to do a program transfer. All right. So let's go ahead and do a press the play button. And it says in order to use the attached ST link with this version of STM32 cube IDE, an update of the ST link firmware is required. Proceed with this update. And you can't get past this. If you say no or cancel, it won't allow you to, um, to transfer the program. So you have to go through this process. So you're gonna get a problem here when you, when you click on open in update mode it's going to say that the ST link is not in DFU mode and you can see that the red LED is not even on so that is correct when the red light is on that means it's in a state that you can uh, do this but you'll see that there's still going to be a problem all right so now it's the red light LED is on you'll need to press the refresh device list actually no actually you know I'm going to try that to see if it makes it better so open in update mode, press the upgrade. Okay, it's working. So you have to make sure to refresh the device list first after you um, disconnect this and connect it back again, and it will update. Otherwise, if you just press update, open in update mode, you'll get another error here. And then you'll have to press the refresh and then um, press the upgrade. Be aware of that. Now this one is upgraded and I can go ahead and brick this mark controller again so let's go ahead and brick it okay okay all right so it's waiting for debugger connection it's going to do a um, verification download and verification successful and you see that the target is not responding and it's retrying again that means that i've broken it again so i'm going to go ahead and do another chip erase And I didn't do it fast enough or I hit something else. So let me go ahead and do it again. Okay, that one worked. Okay, so the problem at hand here is, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this, is that I'm not able to use this library or something with the PLL clock. So I can't increase the microcontroller's internal clock to 48 megahertz in either this particular IDE and this set of libraries for the STM32F0, or it has something something to do with the microcontroller, but I feel that it's more the former than the latter. Uh, I think it has something to do with the libraries that are that are created because four years ago, I was able to, to use these same microcontrollers and increase it to 48 megahertz using the co-IDE, no problem. I'm going to release that video. If you want to give it a try, you can. Um, I'll release the video um, this week. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it today. Uh, so you can give that one a try. And remember that if you brick it, you can always get, get out of that problem. So until I can figure out what's going on, I'm probably going to either try the communication with the 8 megahertz internal clock I know I'm going to be communicating at one megahertz or one megabits per second, and that's going to be problematic, I think. So I will probably try that first, and then if I have any problems, I'm going to put an external quartz crystal oscillator on the circuit. So at least you'll be able to understand how to do that, how to set up the HSE and the LSE, which is the actually the HSE, the high speed external oscillator. I can also try using the low speed external oscillator just for the use, USART and use the standard internal oscillator for the programming. So we'll give that a try uh, a little bit later, but I think this video was really important in helping you be completely successful in doing these projects and be completely frustration free. I hope that helps. Thank you for watching.